Okay, hello everyone, my name is Michael Sweeney and I'm Head of Marketing at ClearCode and in today's video I'm joined by Gotherman, or G-Man for short, uh, who is the CEO of Achilles and today we're going to be talking about data clean room. So welcome G-Man, thank you very much for joining me. So to begin with, maybe just tell us a few words about yourself, uh, about Achilles, how you guys started and then we'll jump into some questions about data clean rooms. Super, thank you. I've, uh, I've, I think everybody knows me as G-Man so it has let me cut to the chase. I've been in the ad industry for the past 30 years uh, across Asia Pacific and uh, three years back I uh, quit WPP to set up this company uh, with a specific conviction that the marketing and advertising tech industry uh, requires a distributed ledger solution because data is getting decentralized and there is a need for a decentralized solution. And that's the germ of the thought and Achilles is, is born out of that conviction. So we stand for a distributed ledger or blockchain for marketing solutions provider. And uh, clean room is one of the solutions uh, which we offer. Uh, over and above that, we leverage clean rooms for many things including cross media measurement and attribution solid edge solutions. Yeah, that's what Achilles is all about. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Excellent. So regarding the, the topic of data clean rooms, it's a fairly, uh, I guess, a fairly new topic, uh, with especially within the programmatic advertising industry. Uh, and, you know, there's different, um, I guess, different types of, let's say, data clean rooms, uh, I guess. So in, in your in your words, what is um, a data clean room? What's kind of the sort of standard definition, I guess, that, that you have of what a data clean room is? In my view, a, a data clean room is a place where uh, a data owner's set of data sets are made available for collaboration, which essentially means that it should be cryptographically secure and, uh, and, uh, and it, is in, it ensures that whatever that is being done with the data, they are able to record and maintain and update those capabilities. Essentially, a clean room is a place where it gives the certificate that this data can be collaborated. Perfect. And a moment ago, you mentioned uh, the decentralized part uh, that you guys are, at Achilles are the decentralized data clean room. So I guess the other, let's say, version of that would be a centralized uh, data clean room. So what is the, the difference between a centralized and a decentralized uh, data clean room? Yeah, so if you, uh, if you look at it today, there are quite a few clean rooms in the marketplace and, uh, and all the current solutions are built for an enterprise for their purposes of maintaining data. So it offers them an enterprise A or a company A or a brand A or a publisher A, a clean room facility where their data is safe and maintained and kept for collaboration purposes. When two such companies want to engage with each other, let's say brand A and publisher A or brand A and a data provider and a publisher, and there are more than two or three participants. Each one of them will have their own clean room by logic because that's how the currently it is built. But when they are all collaborating together, they cannot be putting all the data in another centralized repository. It has to be in a place where which is owned by all of them or it is made available to all of them for uh, for the purpose of clarity, trust and transparency. Which is where the differentiation comes in, Mike, where when there is a centralized clean room means another entity is taking the data out from the respective location into a central server of their own location and then they take the responsibility of processing the data on their behalf. Then the liability shifts from the data owner to the processor, but we don't know how the record is being kept and pushed back. That is where in my view, uh, a decentralized clean room essentially means that it uses the techniques of distributed ledger and where whatever data is being used and processed is made available to all the participants who contribute because otherwise the current system is not scalable. It is one plus one or one maximum one plus two. But then if I have to partner with more than two participants, centralization will not help. Uh, 
that's the difference which we want to bring in. So yeah, I'd love to learn more about this, um, the decentralized part specifically, how you guys handle that and you know how the process works, as you said, you know, for example, between a brand and a publisher. Uh, but maybe I, I guess um, some of these questions may be asked when we talk about some of the main uh, uses of a data clean room. So as many people would have noticed, data clean rooms have started to emerge uh, with all the changes you know, in privacy over the past couple of years, specifically uh, you know, with the end of third-party cookies in browsers such as Safari and Firefox and uh, you know, third-party cookies in Google Chrome are not too far away. Um, so what are some of the you know, main, I guess, use cases or applications uh, of a data clean room you know, in not only uh, advertising and media, but also potentially in some other industries as well? Yeah, so uh, medical industry uh, reports, uh, I think, is the one which is uh, which is now extensively using this today to understand patient data a lot better because the patient's data is sitting in multiple sources. Uh, it helps to resolve uh, records in a very privacy compliant manner without disclosing things that is sensitive to be disclosed, right? Real estate is another uh, uh, industry which is using it very effectively right now. And, uh, and if you extend this logic, wherever there is a supply chain and wherever there is a value exchange that is happening over a period of partners in the supply chain, uh, you, will end, you will necessarily end up having a clean room because somebody is getting the data, they are adding value to it and they want to know whatever value they have added to it and rightfully command a price for the job they are doing, but yet that core data is not being used or abused for any other purposes. And that is why today the ad industry is desperately looking for such a solution because privacy is at the heart of it. Consumer data is being abused beyond uh, uh, control. And uh, the supply chain needs to be transparent in its value exchange that is offering to the system. And uh, yeah, clean room is uh, will become an essential component of any partner who is part of the digital advertising supply chain very, very soon. And um, so just maybe staying on the, the topic of um, uh, programmatic advertising, um, I think a lot of the, I guess, the typical use cases that people think of when they hear data clean rooms in programmatic advertising and, and uh, you know, digital marketing is uh, the measurement part, right? Like it's something, something that happens, um, let's say, after an ad has been shown. But are there applications where data clean rooms can be used for, um, you know, ad targeting, for... Uh, you know, audience audience targeting, not only uh, not only measurement as well. Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, I'm going to talk about what we are offering. Mike, that will probably bring it to life. Mm -hmm. We see it as three broad buckets. One is uh, pure play insights, which helps the participant to learn about the consumers a lot better. And I'll help you with the use case as well. Uh, second bucket is uh, advertising or activation where uh, the clean room capabilities can be used for uh, safe and secure personalized advertising. The third one is uh, measurement or attribution. Uh, I, I bucket both into one. In all the three use cases, uh, clean rooms are uh, becoming very critical and some of our solutions are covering all the, all the three use cases. Okay. And I'm going to refer to some of our partners as well. So, uh, so it's, it's bring it, it helps to bring it to life. So, for example, we are working with one of the leading sports franchise uh, in India, uh, IPL sports franchise, and uh, they uh, they have a sponsor ecosystem of all the sponsors of the team uh, in the jersey, friend, back, uh, beverage partner, so on and so forth. So they want to create a a, a, a layer or a or a configuration where the sponsors can share their first party data to all the other member sponsors of that franchise in a compliant manner which helps them to know about the sports fan a lot better because then I know about this fan much more because they are all part of the same sponsors ecosystem and that helps in upselling and cross-selling uh, solutions amongst the sponsor ecosystem something which is extremely useful uh, in the world today because uh, the sponsorships can be moved just beyond simple vanilla uh, 
uh, spends and uh, and uh, sponsor details but bring it closer to the sports and the fan and the consumer that's a fantastic use case okay so it is about insights it's about knowing the fan a lot better and it's not about advertising but it's about simple marketing or a, or a cross crm uh, init initiative right the, even in such a situation a clean room works very well okay so the way we do it in this case is um, we install a, a node in each of the participants native location so the data doesn't leave the premises nobody pulls in data into a central clean room the fan data remains with each of the sponsors uh, a, a query is made to understand attributes about the fans from all of them that sits in the federated layer and the combined analytics is pushed back to all the partners uh, for any further activation purposes this helps in the participants knowing very well that the data is not being abused for any other purpose that's the purpose of the decentralized or federated layer uh, that's on the insights uh, side of it okay this many brands can use it uh, any of the cpg brands or any other brands can bring their other partners in the ecosystem i'm just saying uh, it's not a case in in point but it's a brand i have worked on for more than two decades in my earlier life with, let's say pepsico pepsi can partner with their pouring rights partner their uh, pizza hut or dominos or any, every any of the other sponsors together they can generate more insights about their own consumer than uh, what they have today that's a very powerful uh, proposition for a uh, for a clean room simply on insights decentralization ensures that the number of partners can be as many as you want so uh, so it is like it's not one or two that's the advantage from being a centralized uh, clean room because otherwise why would 10 companies give the data to one company it doesn't make any, any sense that's on insights on activation uh, which is where we are currently working with i'm sure uh, we are, people know it uh, airtel is one of our strategic investor we are also working with uh, z broadcasting in in india and with few other publishers as well when the when cookies are deprecating and there is no way you can identify your own consumer uh, your first party data is your only source of knowing who your consumers are clean room helps in in a transparent manner and a compliant manner share your brand's data to with the publisher's data to understand your consumers better and say hey I, there is a match so i will use your platform for retargeting or create local likes to push ads uh, to to that platform it also helps in more publishers coming together to offer a marketplace uh, in the decentralized platform which is what we are trying to do in in india uh, right now that's the activation uh, use case last but not the least the measurement which is my personal favorite and my uh, one which i really love because as a planner uh, in my early life i always struggle to allocate my monies across all the platforms you know because each one of them are their own vault gardens they take care of their own attribution and say i am the best but a brand who spends 100 dollars across five such platforms still don't know how to allocate the money between uh, these gardens right which is where uh, WFA and the industry is really looking at cross media measurement solution and uh, we are partnering with Ipsos in in the middle east in offering a cross media solution to the industry using the clean room technology where each of the publishers share their publisher logs in a compliant manner uh, and then a virtual id is created to then do duplication to give the brand a real cross media measurement solution uh, to me that's the most powerful one of 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 the three uh, mike while well, the other the first and the second use case is good to do nice to do uh, but if i have to wear my planner's hat uh, i would say man just ensure that we offer something to the industry where the brands really get their money is worth on true return on investment on measurement so measurement is the heart of the problem mike and if we can fix it we unlock so much money in the industry
Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. As you know, as you mentioned, it's uh, critically important, the measurement part. And this is uh, really one of the, the main challenges with um, the whole end of third party cookies, IDs, you know, identity in general. I mean, right. cer- certainly other, you know, all the other areas are impacted as well. Um, but measurement, as you said, is is the, the key for, for planning, um, for uh, you know, understanding whether a campaign's worked or not as well. So, yeah. Excellent. So a, mo- a moment ago when you were talking about the different applications um, of a data clear room, you talked a lot about first party data. So what, uh, you know, let's say you've got a brand and a, and a publisher that uh, want to come together, use a you know, data clean room like Achilles. Okay. What, what would they need in order to make that happen? Obviously, a lot of companies um, already have a lot of first party data that they collect. Um, obviously, a lot of companies are starting to invest a lot more in um, building out their first-party data strategies and collecting it uh, more so than ever before. But what do they actually need to tie that all together? Is it some kind of ID that needs to, to be able to match up? Yeah. So uh, at the very basic level, I think a device ID or a mobile number or an email address is what as one of the three key uh, connecting attributes that... Uh, that is being you that can be used uh, on both sides of the uh, of the partnership uh, many publishers today don't even have that mike so because they have been comfortable with the way consumers are logging into their website without actually logging in they just check in and right so the publishers are also looking at finding some kind of an identity resolution solution that helps resolve the signals to say hey these these are my consumers and they create their own ID, the proprietary ID that represents the consumer base. That can also tag down to these three variables. Uh, that helps in creating cohorts or lookalikes a lot better because it is it need not be only extremely deterministic match from the clean rooms. We can find adjacent attributes uh, when we are act- talking to each of the partners. Apart from the three device persistent uh, identifiers, what kind of programs they watch, what uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, movies they like, or there are many other attributes, you know, volume of consumption, value of consumptions. So any other attributes can also be added to that uh, repository, which can be queried on both sides to find a match. My, my humble submission is today, uh, uh, People use third-party cookies for chasing or tracking the consumer on the other side, but still it is 50% efficient only. People think that, you know, that we are tracking, but we are not tracking really very well. We all know that it is only half efficient. Uh, when the cookies go away, it is almost going to be near zero. You are going to shoot at the dark. You are going to be blind in your identifying consumer. Any kind of these attributes that can be matched, is still better than shooting in the dark and any kind of attributes you match will still be better than the current third party cookies that's being matched because it is it never was really uh, truly delivering its its promise so uh, to answer to your question it is email address mobile number or a device id plus uh, any other attributes that we can bring in uh, is more than enough to find uh, the corresponding consumers for insights and activation. Yeah, and that, that's a, you know, you've mentioned uh, some quite interesting points there because, you know, even when we look at some of the ID solutions that are on the market, um, many of those use uh, things like email addresses, phone numbers to create IDs, but, you know, one would argue that it's not being done necessarily in this, I mean, certainly not being done the same way from a privacy perspective as that's it right. is with so, data clearing because there's no real decentralization. I mean, there is, um, you know, consent that needs to be collected, there's encryption, but there's still this missing piece of the all the other um, parts like decentralization, federated right. privacy. So yeah. It's a very important point, uh, Mike. I think thanks you brought it up. So whether it is GDPR, or CCPA or personal data protection bill in India and in Indonesia and any other market, the fundamental question that everybody is asking for or requiring is as a data owner, they need to maintain a record of what's been done with the data and to be and that needs to be made available upon request either by the consumer or by the regulatory authority that record can only be maintained 
in a distributed ledger because you're sharing it with your partner and let's say i am i am g man and i am i am a telco user and i'm also a public publication reader when i'm found on both the databases and they found me and say hey this is g man track him and serve him an ad then both the publisher and the telco needs to update the record that g man was found and tracked and served ads that is not simply possible if it is not on a decentralized ledger because there has to be somebody else a, a neutral uh, layer that maintains that record who does not have any other intent of monetizing it uh, you know that's very important uh, i remember when we were working with uh, project reark on iib tech lab uh, years back when we were setting these regulations this was the first and most important thing it has to be a neutral entity that maintains the record of processing of activities who does not have any motivation of monetizing it that can only happen if it is a federated layer so uh, i mean it that's the conviction with which achilles was built i mean i just uh, want to bring it to life uh, during this this mm-hmm. point yeah perfect yeah and i remember when we spoke previously you mentioned that you uh, you guys utilize uh, blockchain for as part of this this ledger right so that's quite a you know because uh, you know go back a few years ago when blockchain first came out a lot of people in the industry were talking about the, you know the potential applications of blockchain right. so, in program programmatic advertising you know potentially using it for for real time bidding but um, it's it's interesting that, that you know uh, to to see an actual real life application of blockchain and to actually see it being used in an in such an appropriate way right like it's um, it, it's used you know generally how blockchain technology is used it's not necessarily used to you know right. uh, so, run auctions but as you said to to provide a uh, a path to to show uh, right. records so, in this ledger absolutely so, yeah so uh, i mean uh, it is a great story uh, mike uh, three years back when i jumped into this uh, everybody thought blockchain they jumped into cryptocurrencies and bitcoin and said hey what are you going to do with tokens in advertising we steered cleared of it it is a pure play saas platform uh, we are not putting the impressions or the consumer data on the public blockchain it's a distributed ledger a permission ledger built for a specific participant to do whatever they want to do with it and at a periodic level a, a merkel proof or a hash is only being put on the public blockchain so we have built a very patented hybrid platform which is got a patent in both us and and in singapore right now so we are not a bitcoin company we are not, it's not about uh, blockchain I, I, that's why i steer clear to say it is a distributed ledger technology rather than a blockchain uh, technology yeah yeah excellent yes yeah, so it's so always good to uh, create a distinction isn't it because you don't want to get you don't want to get a, you know uh, caught up in the whole crypto you don't even know it's a crypto <laughs> crypto this, company this is not the year in any case <laughs> no <laughs> that's right excellent Perfect. So yeah, a moment ago we were talking about uh, IDs. You know, you said um, in order for a publisher and a brand, let's say, to work together, they need to have some kind of common, uh, you know, ID. Let's say it's an email address, phone number. So, what's the uh, general process uh, in terms of, um, you know, I- I- encrypting those IDs and ensuring that they are uh, that their privacy is maintained? So, what's that sort of process look like? So I think the in- industry universally uses uh, a SHA-256 today as a as an encryption technique, which is an uh, is a one-way encryption. It ensures that uh, when you decrypt it, you get the same results back again. So we use that for matching purposes. So by default, our technology ensures that it is encrypted. It is uh, uh, so that you never get your original data out. So the uh, the re- uh, processing log also tells you that you have de- encrypted it then when we are matching it and it matched on the encrypted field and when we pushed back to the respective participants for activation they decrypt it and then they activate it and then that is also put on the record as a uh, proof of a uh, processing of activities so we give them a full fledged uh, uh, provenance ledger for both the participants so that they know this data was encrypted matched insights generated activated and pushed so that's the advantage of uh, the platform yeah it is encrypted uh, with uh, in- universal encryption scheme is, is it possible to decrypt uh, this this idea so i think a lot of people especially non technical people when they hear of you know encryption if they can you know, if they work if they know that uh, 
um, like I said, an email address is encrypted um, and then it spits out some, you know, random string of, of letters and numbers. Is it possible to then like decrypt that um, or is that once it's encrypted, that's it, you can't decrypt it? Yeah, you cannot decrypt it. it, it only the source, only the owner can decrypt it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Cool. Um, so what kinds of uh, channels uh, are you working across currently? What like the some of the clients that you mentioned before, what are some of the main channels where they are using a data clean room? So predominantly uh, the, the current, our current focus is on publishers uh, who are uh, offering this as a solution to go to brands to say, I can offer you better targeting purposes because they have rich repository of first party data particularly OTT platforms and CTV who, who is rich enough to. And then uh, in the absence of any other means of targeting, this gives them much better targeting because brands can have their own uh, first party data set up in their own premises. They can match it and then serve an ad on the OTT platform, which is very, very deterministic in its, uh, in its nature. So it is predominantly publishers who are the first set of uh, people who have shown a lot of interest and as, and as i told you sports franchises is another one which is uh, which is showing interest in terms of understanding consumer insights and fan data that's the second uh, one mike i think that's where we are today uh, the reason for uh, for uh, i wouldn't say slow adoption the even the reason for whatever state in terms of adoption is because many of them still don't have first party data or many of them don't have a structured customer data platform that offers them uh, their data in a, in, a, in a manner where that can be used. So those are, I would say, um, intermediary headwinds for adoption, but that's a question of time and everybody now knows that they need to maintain their database in their own premises. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's interesting you mentioned before that a lot of the, uh, the 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 companies that are using your data clean room are publishers. I think we've seen this with quite a lot of the other uh, solutions that have been developed in you know in response to the end of third party cookies. Whether it's you know uh, the seller defined audiences, it's a lot of it seems to be led by the supply side. Because I guess a lot of the um, companies, agencies, brands on the buy side are, are still very much uh, you know relying on, on the third party cookies and maybe we won't see as much mo movement until uh, until they're completely gone and then they've got no other option. <laughs> there is a still a state of you know a denial uh, that one day it will happen till the uh, till the proverbial cookie totally crumbles life goes on but uh, some of them are getting ready for uh, uh, the world because the winter is coming. Yes exactly Get, getting closer and closer even even though google has delayed it a few times it is getting it, there, there will come a point where you know there won't be any more delays it will just that will just go <laughs> excellent so um i wanted to ask you about uh, the iab tech lab because i, I think it was a, a month or two ago they announced that they will be working on uh some standards around what a data you know around data clear rooms yeah um and i i understand that achilles is part of this group so uh, what would you like to see in this standard? What, what kinds of you know things would you like to see in this uh, IAB Tech Lab, um, you know, standards or definitions of of what of, of data clean rooms? Yeah. So uh, we have not discussed it about it, but if I have to say from whatever I have, uh, it it's more from an individual or a personal point of view. This, we need to standardize uh, the provenance ledger. I would say. Uh, a consistent way in which the participants can see how the data is being used, uh, which uh, which can be safely shared to the complaints authority to say, hey, this is what uh, uh, we uh, we have been done with the data, right? So uh, the the best way to show it is that you know if you go to uh, in any of the product, there is a barcode, and then that that shows you the specifications of the of the product in it as it's like a stamp right we need to get to that level of sophistication to have some kind of an immediate ledger that shows that you now your data is being used and it is being used like this is a trail of information i think that to my mind needs to be standardized because each one can't generate their own reports uh, another one is like we talked about uh, encryption consistent format of encryption 
and standards on encryption and and uh, uh, how it needs to be maintained and uh, and it can even be a kit which can be given to all the publishers to say that look this is an encryption kit you need to just iab certified encryption kit so yeah these are my two initial thoughts i'm sure if yonas is listening to this you will you uh, will you will you will say yes let's get on with it so <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, th those standards from the I IAB Tech Lab to see what uh, comes out of that. Excellent. Um, so the, the last question I have is uh, something that you, you mentioned uh, to, to me earlier was about um, AWS uh, announcing that they are launching a data clean room. And this is actually fresh off the off the press. It's uh, it was only only released today. Uh, managed to you know you shared it before our call. Uh, so I wanted to just ask your thoughts on that. So. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about what this announcement is, uh, and what also what it means for uh, you know brands, publishers, etc., and also what it means for the um, data clean room providers that are on the market. Yeah, so uh, it, I woke up today morning with this news, right? So my my immediate reaction is that no, wow! I think even before the industry is begun, it is getting commoditized. So we already have quite a few players offering clean data clean rooms today, right? Uh, and uh, uh, Amazon coming with it through the AWS solutions is a fantastic thing because they have natural product extension capabilities of offering these uh, 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 clean room solutions. And in fact, many of the other solutions provided, let's say if I ignore uh, Azure and uh, GCP, um, all the other clean room providers like Infosum, Habu, LiveRamp, Decentry, there are quite a few people there. All of them use any one of these cloud solutions provider to offer the clean room solution because the cloud essentially sits with these three big guys, right? So if the if the big guys already offer this solution as clean rooms, it is interesting to see how this entire clean room solution is going to play out in the longer run because um, encryption can become uh, standardized, the ledgers can be uh, can become standard in the longer run. So what is the actual role of a clean room? apart from generating insights, uh, offering activation or measurement. So we are, I think I'm seeing an accelerated, uh, uh, it's like watching a movie in fast forward, you know, to, to the end, see where it's, uh, where, it, where it's going to lead to. Uh, that's my initial reaction, Mike. So uh, it is, it, it's a good thing uh, uh, because there is no category awareness. Uh, all of us have been trying to, shout from a rooftop to say hey it is important it is important now the world will say wow yeah i need a clean room so the category building and awareness is definitely uh, good from this and uh, from our perspective uh, we see it as extremely complementary because uh, we are, we already use aws today as our federated layer because amazon offers blockchain solutions so our uh, node installations and our federated layer are already built on uh, uh, AWS solutions today uh, and uh, I, I won't be surprised if you ask the Amazon team they will say hey AWS is different from Amazon advertising we are two separate companies we deal with us separately so amongst them they are still two separate enterprises and it is just a technical solution coming from the technology uh, uh, team so it's it's a very good news uh, for us it is uh, uh, even better news because uh, uh, we are already working with them as our federated layer partner. This helps us in uh, building adoption uh, faster, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Sounds good. All right. So, um, G-Man, thank you very much. That's all the questions thank I you. had. Was there, was there anything else you wanted to add? Any other final points or anything? Not really, Mike. I think it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity. Thank you for giving me time. Uh, uh, it's a much needed solution for the industry and uh, and I must say I'm wishing you all the very best for doing a fantastic job of bringing awareness to these solutions from ClearCode. Perfect. Excellent. Thank, thank you very much for the kind words and likewise all the best with you and, and your, your ventures in, in the data clean room space. And we'll leave a, uh, a link and, uh, you know, link, link to our LinkedIn accounts um, on, in the bio in the description below. So if people want to get in touch with yourself, uh, they can certainly contact you on LinkedIn. I know you're very active on LinkedIn uh, talking about data clean room. So certainly it's the best place, I guess, for people to, to connect with you and learn more about this. So g -Man, once again, thank you very much for your time and we'll, we'll speak again soon. Thank you, Mike. All right, thank you.